Interestingly, we had a lot of business friends tell us, are you nuts? You're going to open a vegan restaurant in Y Manalo. You're absolutely going to fail. Right. And we said, screw it, we're going to do it. <laughs> and, and I just went ahead and, and did it. From Rise High, this is Why Not Me, a show about Kama'aina creators, entrepreneurs, and community leaders. Behind the scenes stories of how they got to where they are and the valuable lessons they learned along the way. I'm your host, Gabe Ame, and in this episode, we get to chat with Malia Smith, the founder of restaurant I Love Nalo. Malia shares why she felt compelled to leave her successful career in education to help the Native Hawaiian community overcome health issues such as obesity, diabetes, and heart disease by starting a vegan restaurant and meals-to-go business in Wamanalo. All right, we'd like to welcome our next guest to Why Not Me. We've got Malia Smith, who is the founder and owner of I Love Nalo. How's it going, Malia? How's it? How are you doing, Gabe? Doing well, doing well. So um, you've got an interesting journey. And for those of you who are not familiar with I Love Nalo, why don't you give everyone a, uh, a little background of what I Love Nalo is? So I Love Nalo is a full plant-based uh, restaurant, cafe. Uh, we provide healthy alternative uh, food options for people in our community. You know, you, you're running, you're running a food business now, and but you never, you had an interesting route to get there, right? So I think people need to really know the full context of how, how are you? Run, why you went from multiple different backgrounds and industries, most recently in education, um, and so how did you get to the food industry? Gosh, I had. You're right. I have had a long journey. (laughs) I was a radio personality for a while, a news director for radio station. Um, I was in the political field where I was a chief of staff for a state senator, Um, ended up going to get my undergrad in communications and then my master's um, in corporate communications with an emphasis in organizational change management. And after that, I went on to get my doctorate in in education and then i became a professor at hawaii pacific university concurrently to that i was asked to be the board president for sustain hawaii which is a nonprofit, um, and we've done tons of work so while i was a professor at um, the university we got hired by the hawaii department of agriculture to do a food systems metrics platform And what that was, was just to help mitigate the reliance of importation that Hawaii has on food. And basically what I did was I looked at Hawaii's food system, as well as the national and international food systems. And I did kind of like a comparative. And in doing so, what I had discovered was that, yes, Hawaii has heavy reliance on food importation. But what's interesting is that we have the capacity to be able to grow enough food here to sustain all of us. We started to identify various things that we could be growing here. Like, for example, why are we importing avocados when we can grow avocados here, you know, in, in, in large masses for our people? And in the process of that research, I also discovered that there's many pockets of um, food deserts here on the islands. Basically what it is, is there's not a lot of healthy food options that people can actually engage in their community. So low income areas often are fraught with um, like convenience stores, you know, where they sell alcohol and then you can get hot dogs for 99 cents, which is not good for our people. And unfortunately those food deserts are located in high native Hawaiian populated areas. So, of course, on Nanakuli, where I grew up, um, Waianae, um, Waimanalo, where I currently live, and all mm-hmm. the Papakolea and all the kind of low income areas where the native Hawaiians are. So, in discovering that, I started to have this pull in my heart that I wanted to really engage. Um, the Hawaiian people and help with improving the health and vitality of our people. And fortunately, we've had a lot of really awesome Hawaiian leaders that have been reviving, you know, our language, our culture and all that. But one thing that's missing is taking care of our health. Hawaiian people have the one of the highest, um, in, in fact, the highest in our state of diabetes. I ended up 
taking a leap of faith because I was at the university for eight and a half years and that job was very comfortable. You work um, eight months out of the year, you have two months off or you're kind of writing and, and that it was um, a hard decision to make. But I ended and, you up, were, and you worked your way up to be the dean of gender yeah. education, right? And no, oh, that's yeah. no easy task, right? Right. And, and just to let you know, when I was getting my doctorate, I was a single mom. Um, and my daughter was only, uh, you know, very young. And I would have to take her to school with me and she would sit underneath my table. So it's possible to do stuff, you know, and, and really push to, to, a, to strive and achieve things. It's funny because as I was doing that and I was very comfortable at the university, I, I couldn't just sit back and allow our Native Hawaiian people to continue to suffer and I had to do something about it. But what I decided to do was I wanted to go get a professional certificate in plant-based nutrition and I, I got the certificate so I was able to learn about metabolics and what happens in your body and mm -hmm. whatnot and then how to move toward a healthier lifestyle. Fortunately, I was vegan already so that was... Um, you know, it was an easy transition for me, but I knew that a lot of Hawaiian people would have a difficult time with transition. Mm. What we're trying to do is have um, all people in Hawaii increase their plant-based um, nutrition. So after doing the research, um, we decided, you know what, I, I, got, I got to do this. So <laughs> fortunately, I had the opportunity to acquire um, I Love Nalo and create it. I in Hawaiian means food or to eat. Um, and mm -hmm. when you look at the kona, the hidden meaning behind ai, Hawaiians um, primarily ate fruits and vegetables. Uh, they did, of course, incorporate some meat, but it was mostly the ali'i. And the maka'ainana, of course, ate fish. So they were more pescatarian, you know, yeah. than anything. But they ate a lot of um, fruits and vegetables. So the ai, the kauna um, behind ai, is uh, fruits and vegetables and um, foods that are really um, in alignment with our Hawaiian people and our diet. So kalo, ulu, coconut, like all of those things. Um, uwala. We felt like I was such a great word. And then I love is like loving food. And then of course, nalo, you know, we live in Waimanalo and we decided to just go for it. Interestingly, we had a lot of business friends tell us, are you nuts? You're going to open a vegan restaurant in Waimanalo. You're absolutely going to fail. Right. And we said, screw it. We're going to do it. <laughs> and, and I just went ahead and, and did it. What did, you, what did you create? So you got this, you get this cafe of plant-based food, right? There's more to it, right? It's not just about food. It's about overall wellness. So why don't you absolutely. kind of walk us through that? Um, so what happened was I was working one day at the restaurant and I'm just doing my thing. <laughs> um, and, a, and a young man walked up to me from Waimanalo. And he mm -hmm. said, hey, Auntie, I need to have heart surgery done. But I'm, I'm overweight. And my doctor won't allow me to do that unless I lose some weight. So I told him, okay, um, what are you doing right now? And he said, oh, I'm going to McDonald's. I'm, try I'm eating like you know, their chicken salad and whatnot. And I'm like, okay, dude, just to let you know, iceberg lettuce has like very little nutrition. You got to have like dark leafy greens. Um, their ranch dressing is loaded with fat and the chicken is not helping you. So we have to like revamp this and think about it. So I said, okay, here's what I'm willing to do with you. If you commit to me, because he's like a full on local brother, right? From my Manalo. I said, you commit to me and I will feed you two meals a day six days a week and we'll try it for three months and see how it mm -hmm. goes well in two okay. and a half months he had lost 24 pounds and he was able to go get his heart surgery done and it was a success and he had mm -hmm. lost more weight once he came out so after that he told me you know auntie i i get one friend <laughs> and so i helped his friend and then his friend had a friend and so pretty soon i was helping these people and luckily because i work as the um, president for a nonprofit, sustain hawaii um, we were able to raise funding to be able to cover their meals. Yeah. Um, and then it started to kind of expand. And what was touching my heart at that moment was I was noticing when we opened Island Malo, we were very successful, but we weren't really capturing the local people because when local people hear vegan, they go, Oh, I don't like eat kale and just drink smoothies. You know I mean? It's a tough transition. Go, oh, yeah. That is not our menu. We get Lala, we get Luau, we have tofu poke bowl. 
we have um, like barbecue portal sandwiches to die for. So I'm like, just trust me. I, I, right. I get a local palate. I grew up in Nanakuli. I know what you guys want to eat, you know, so mm. we're not going to just make it a bunch of salad. Trust me. So mm. he ended up having great success and we ended up taking on his friends. And so what I did was I thought, you know what? I think what we need to do is incorporate more than just the food because it's habitual as well as a mindset. Like I said, Hawaiian people have a lot of historical trauma that they're dealing with. And, the, mm -hmm. and a lot of times the way that we self-medicate is through alcohol, drugs, and food. So we gain yeah. addictions. We are, you know, have a lot of addictions. So we have to address those issues. So taking my background in education, God had a bit bigger plan for me. I took that education um, and I started to write curriculum for the program. So I created a program. It's called Ha Ehu Ola, which means promoting wellness and health. And mm -hmm. I wrote curriculum for an entire year and I created a program. And I developed this program around what's called the seven levels of health. So the seven levels of health includes ecological, so our land, Malama Aina. Um, it is sociocultural, which is community. So we have to take care of one of um, each other. Kaya Ulu mm -hmm. was very important to the Hawaiian people. And then economic, making sure that the economy around us, sharing, you get fish, I get kalo, we share, kind of like that kind of concept. That's the we aspect of the seven levels of health. The me um, part of the seven levels of health is physical. So our physical body, how do we care for our body? Um, and then psychological, what is the emotional and mental aspects that we're dealing with in order for us to improve? And the last yeah. one is financial. So how do we survive in this world financially to be able to take care of our fundamental needs? Then the seventh level is spiritual. The Hawaiian people were very, very spiritual. We were connected to everything. The Hawaiian people have a name for every single wind that we experience here in Hawaii, we have a relationship with it. So Io or spirit um, weaves through all of that. You know, it is the Aka, it is the thing that connects all of us. And so um, that's the seven levels of health. And I built a curriculum around that. I had one individual who started off at 650 pounds. He lost 150 pounds in three months. Um, mm -hmm. We had people reverse their metabolic conditions, like their pre-diabetic conditions, get off their statin drugs. Um, it, it was just, it's been a remarkable journey. Um, <clears throat> you left HPU, started a vegan restaurant in Wamanalo, right? With the goal of, of helping um, reduce the food deserts, especially on the windward side. Yeah. Um, and then you incorporated a whole new wellness program and then 2020 hits and we're dealing with COVID-19. So how did that throw a wrench into your, your plans and what did you do? And what was interesting was when it hit, we thought to ourselves, we meaning the Board of Sustained Hawaii, we've been talking for a long time that we have to pull back, Hawaii has to pull back on our reliance on tourism. And the pandemic is really highlighting how the, um, the Hawaii people need to start to think about how we're going to take care of ourselves without relying on outside influence. So while the pandemic was in full blown here in Hawaii and all the restaurants and everybody had to shut down, we started to rethink our whole process. So what we decided to do was take the meal plan program, which is what I had developed for Hai Huola, and mm -hmm. incorporate it into I Love Nalo. So right now we just reopened I Love Nalo with this meal plan program. So people can purchase one, two, three, and four week meals um, at a time. We deliver, so we never had delivery before, so now we have delivery. Um, and then you can also order meals for takeout, but it has to be ordered two days in advance. So you, yeah, you're reinventing yourself really uh, totally. with this meal plan program. Now, what is very interesting is that you guys are actually delivering these meal plans yeah. through a good portion of, and it's not just Windward Side. So why don't you share, yeah. if you're interested in getting a meal plan from I Love Nalo, mm -hmm. um, you can actually live in multiple different locations on Oahu and still yeah. get delivery, right? Yeah, so our hope is eventually we will expand more, but what we're doing is just trying it out for now. Um, the, a lot of people have shown interest in particular areas, which is why we had 
um, chosen those areas for delivery. So basically, it's Waimanalo, Hawaii Kai, all the way through Ainahaina to New Valley, um, Kaimuki, Makiki. Um, we are also doing Nu'uwanu, uh, all of Kailua, so Enchanted Lakes, Manawili, and then Kaneohe, all the way up to Haiku Gardens. Mm -hmm. So that's it for now, but eventually, yeah. I think we're going to get enough demand where we will be start, starting to go into town once you know the economy opens up a little bit more. But as of right now, that's the areas that we're delivering to. Um, and we're pretty stoked because uh, it's been quite popular. You know, um, we only yeah. just opened this week, actually, uh, reopened this week. It took us that long to be able to revamp everything, you know, because it is like I said, you're, you're starting all over again. But, but if you have the tenacity and you really have the wanting, I think that you can do anything, you know. So with you, you know, what, what you're doing now is a culmination of all the skill sets you've, you've developed from your prior careers, right? Yeah. What, what piece of advice would you give someone in terms of trying different things, you know, instead of just saying, I'm just going to do this, trying yeah. different things before they, you know, go on their journey. So two, two things primarily. One is um, get, gain as much skills as you possibly can relative to your interests. You know, um, initially for me, I was interested in communication and um, I also taught myself how to cook. So I learned about that. So I incorporated that. Um, I learned about organizations and um, how to manage that, which is really important when you end up being an entrepreneur and starting your own business. Um, and then I had, you know, my background in education. So I pretty much was all over the place. Yeah. But interestingly, God had a plan for me and I was really, really um, open. I surrendered to it. And now I'm running this, you know, <laughs> vegan meal plan program. Um, which I never in a million years growing <laughs> up in Anakuli, like a vegan. And yeah, so I did yeah. not, I did not think that about that at all, but you, it's interesting because if you gain more skills, you can weave them together and then create something magical. The second thing that I would say is be flexible. Unless you were born and you knew you wanted to be a doctor or an attorney or a plumber or a fireman, if that's your passion, or you want to be a lifeguard or whatever it is, go and do that. But if you are the kind of person like me, where I just was interested in so many things, go do all of that. And then mm. be flexible and surrender to life, surrender to what God throws at you. And then just be open to um, allowing for the best to come forward. As long as you keep your heart in check, you know, you'll be able to utilize all of those skills. All right. We're going to jump over to, your Instagram. I love Lot Nalo, right? And um, what are we looking at here? So what we're looking at right now is my team helping me to put together all of these meals. This, what you're looking at is um, our sandwich, one of the meals that we provided. The yellow one is our no egg salad sandwich. Interestingly mm. enough, it does taste a little bit like egg because we use a product um, that um, makes it have a sulfuric smell to it. So it smells kind of eggy, but we're actually using tofu. And the other thing is our no tuna <laughs> um, salad sandwich, and it's made out of chickpea. We put a lot of really cool stuff into it, like capers and um, uh, kelp, which makes it have like that fishy taste. And then um, we use kibata bread, and sometimes we use sprouted bread. So it's one of the meals that our Ha'ihuola members got. Um, and it's yeah. my team that is helping me put it together. Looks oh no, I would try that. I'm not vegan, but yeah, hey, I'd eat really that. Surprising. Yeah. It's funny because a lot of the local people that they, at first when they, they're like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to like vegan. And then they taste it and they're like, wait, this is vegan? No, this is so not vegan. I was like, yeah, because we make cheese, you know, we make all kinds of stuff. So kinds. yeah. Nice. All right. You ready for the speed round? Questions? Sure. Let's, Let's go for it. Okay, ready? First thing that pops in your head, you name it. Okay. Last book you read. The last book I read was A Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. <laughs> Favorite way to relax? Um, I love doing e ala e. Um, that is a Hawaiian ceremony where you actually bring um, the sun up. So we love doing that, doing e ala e in the morning. Um, or walking in our walking path here on the farm. If you could learn any new skill, what would it be? I would love to be able to speak Hawaiian fluently, and I would love to learn how to play the piano. A 
place you like to travel to? Uh, New Zealand. What's the best piece of advice you have for either a high school, Hawaii high school student, or a Hawaii college graduate trying to figure out in the world today? Most people will say, follow your passion or, you know, do, um, make sure you're good to people. And all of that stuff is super important. I agree. And that, that's mm -hmm. the way I live. That's what I embody. But one thing that often is not shared with our local people is invest early. If you're 16 and above and you have a job, if you're a college student, you should be investing. Take out an IRA, you know, a Roth IRA. Put $20 every single month into it. If we are trying to move toward a sustainable lifestyle, it's not only about malama aina, it's not only malama yourself, your body, but it's also your financial wealth. Because oftentimes when we are financially strapped, we have so much worry that we get stuck in, oh my God, living in fear. And I don't want that for our people. I want us to be able to live as a community, to be super creative, to be able to give back. And in order for us to give back, we have to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves. You can be way more giving, way more loving when you're not so worried about those things. You know, I think with you and, and I love Nalo, you know, you're, you're starting with helping the Nalo community. And I think it's yeah. just going to increase into the rest of Oahu and beyond. So keep up the great work what you guys are doing. Uh, we're, we're cheering for you. And, um, and you. for those of you who uh, are scared of vegan, you know, let's, let's try it. You know, it looks, it looks ono. So, yeah. all right. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, I want to say one last thing. Um, it's not me. It takes a community of people. It's my staff. It's my family. Um, it is why Manalo community um, and of course, it's the heart behind all of it. And then the sense of community giving back to one another. Thanks, Gabe. Right on. Mahalo, Melia.